Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. This is Tina and I thought I would record a little message for you. As you've wrapped up your money mindset makeover, what a journey it's been, right? And one of the things that I invite you to give yourself some time for, set aside some time to do a bit of journaling, to get really clear on what I'm about to share with you as this is just going to help you tremendously. The astrology that is up for the coming few years is really here to help us break free, shackle the, and you know, unshackle from whatever has kept us entangled in with that old martyr game to truly step into creating in this whole new playing field where joy and abundance are the new bottom line. And in order to do that, as you may know, Getting something at a conscious level is one thing. Really letting it sink in and be fully settled into your body so that you are embodying the light that you are, that is the journey of mastery. And I believe that that's what we've all signed up for. All right? So, hello. Oh, I, I can't see on here at the moment um, who is joining us live. So let me just move this over for a second so I can. Let's have a look. So anyway, if you're joining live, then yeah, join in as I, as I go through this process. And it's Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Yay. All right. So realizing that, you know, in order to really live what it is that you consciously say that you want means that you have to be willing to let go of all the ways that you have done things in the past, the way you have thought about things and what you have chosen to commit to, basically re-switching your focus. And when you realize that one of the things that we've been programmed in this world, coming into this world, being in a physical body at this time, our parents were programmed that way, their parents, their parents, their parents, and so forth, is that the focus has been on being safe. Safety is what re what's required in order to survive in this world. And one of the things that that has set up is that unconsciously you're constantly trained, you know, you've been trained to be on the lookout for what to avoid, to avoid danger. And danger to the part of you that is used to having things be the same is change. So when you are wanting to make some conscious changes, if your unconscious is not on board with that, it will deem this as a threat. It will feel unsafe and therefore will do whatever it can to make sure you do not make those changes, even if you consciously really, 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 really say you want them, right? So one of the ways that that plays out is that because of this unconscious focus on what you don't want, you know, you want to avoid danger, you want to avoid what you do not want so that you can have what you want. But what that does is it keeps on investing energy into creating more of what you don't want. Ever recognize that? You know, so this is why, you know, going back into essence manifesting, why it's so important to get clear on why you want to create something. As you go through that process, you'll find that if you're noticing as to what it's going to bring you, answering those questions as to why something is important to you and what do you think it's going to bring you will bring to light where you may be wanting to create this to avoid something. You know, this is where this, the rubber hits the road. You know, it's time to really let yourself realize that you have the power to change the channel. You get to choose where you focus your energy. And doing this consciously takes some effort initially. You know, knowing that oftentimes when you're asking these questions that really have you dig deep as in what truly matters to you, it will feel like hard work only because you haven't been used to focusing on it that way. If you realize the amount of energy, and I know you've all experienced this, that when you realize the amount of energy invested in avoiding what you do not want and thereby constantly pushing things away, it's like having a boogie board, being in the ocean and wanting, or a pool and wanting to keep suppressing that takes a lot of energy. And when you let that go, boom, all that energy is now available to infuse into creating what does light you up. 
which is why we ask the questions, what is it you want to create? What are the juicy money goals that you want to manifest? Why is that important to you? What do you think it's going to bring you? And when you have what that brings you, how do you feel connecting in with the essence state? Knowing that the state that you are broadcasting when you are wanting to manifest something is what will show up in your world. And if you have a bit of energy going towards what you want and a bit of energy going to avoid what you want, that's when you start getting mixed results, which can be really confusing because part of you will say, well, okay, I'm getting some results I want and yet other times not which makes it feel unreliable, which then reinforces the old story that you can't rely on your inner guidance. You start doubting yourself. Now, where that one comes from is that this whole part of wanting to be safe is that we have been so programmed and conditioned into not making mistakes or making the wrong choices, right? And that if you're afraid of making mistakes and you're afraid of making wrong choices, and so therefore you want to avoid making mistakes and avoid making wrong choices, guess what? Your energy unconsciously is broadcasting to the universe mistakes and wrong choices and that's what you will be drawing to you, which then has you doubt your inner guidance, your inner wisdom and keeps that whole loop going of that you don't feel that you can trust yourself, that it's not safe to trust yourself. And truth be told, it's not safe to trust your ego insights. It is safe to trust the light that you are. And one of the ways that this can also play out is that if this is running, then in things, you know, the old martyr game conditions the rules of the game on this planet where you have to suffer, struggle, sacrifice to get your rewards. As we are choosing more and more to experience more and more ease, more grace, more fun, more flow, everything that's basically what the martyr game was setting you up for to not have, when you are saying yes to ease, when you're saying yes to those essence states that you desire to experience more of, when you are saying yes to ease, when you are saying yes to flow, when you are saying yes to abundance of what supports your essence to thrive and abundance of money flowing in and abundance of fun and whatever else, peace, harmony, all of that, as you're saying yes to that, if there is part of the old story running that that is not safe because it is stepping out of that martyr game, then you will find things going easy and suddenly start asking, oh my God, am I doing it right? Oh my God, I must be doing something wrong. And bam, back in that loop you go. So what I'm encouraging you to do is to set aside some time to journal, again, what we talked about in the last integration call as to what really matters to you. What is truly important to you? And initially when going through this process, it's really easy to say the things that you think should matter or that you want to matter to you. If you find that this, you know, writing down what matters to you, for example, it could be freedom or it could be for many, it's financial security. If you experienced financial security, and if you, were from this, if you were living in the place where you just know that you can manifest what you desire, including the financial uh, resources that you require to do whatever it is that you want to do that lights you up, then financial security wouldn't even be on your list very likely because it's not something that you are um, you know, trying to avoid not having. So when you, if financial security is something that's really important to you, then you want to make sure that you get clear on, you know, why is that important to you and notice if there is because you don't want to end up on the street, because you don't want to end up with nothing, because you don't want to have the stress, you don't want to worry, blah, 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 whatever all of that stuff is. If money having, you know, money is important to you and you still have a whole bunch of lack stories running, which we've all been programmed with, then noticing that you know, if, the, if you're then saying you want more money or you want more financial security, but what you're really uh, you're wanting, which comes to light by asking why this is important to you, is what you're wanting to avoid, then you are creating more than in your database. If we're typing in your Google search, you know, okay, I want more money, I want more financial security, or I want financial security then what you're really broadcasting is that you are wanting more to worry about. You're wanting more stress. You're wanting more lack. You're wanting more struggle. 
And so this is where that inner push-pull plays out. And when you relax, just a moment, you know, oftentimes, if you've ever experienced that, you're finding yourself tuned into the worry channel and you're starting to get all contracted and you're stressed out and oh my god next thing you know you're so confused because you just don't know where to focus your attention and now you're feeling overwhelmed and oh my god nothing is flowing and when you're in that space if you go and do anything on your business in your business it is just spinning your wheels and you'll find that whatever it is that you're creating is just not going to get the results whereas if in that moment you feel you remember this is part of the mastery journey if in that moment that you remember hang on a minute why am I wanting to create this I want to experience more of my essence state of joy I want to experience ease I want to experience flow I want to experience freedom I want to experience harmony I want to experience plenty I want to experience overflow whatever it is and you tune into that then let yourself just say, I wonder what are the ways that I can experience more joy right now? What are some of the ways that I can experience what enhances the joy in my life right now? And then that is what you focus on. And it may be that for you, this is where one of the things too, you can look to see what is really important to you. If you're not clear as you're going through writing the, the values down initially, then take some time to write about looking at the results that you're getting in your life and based on those results imagine that someone you were looking at someone else's life what would have to be important to that person to be having these results in my life for example it is really important to me to have plenty of time for myself quiet time where I don't have to do anything and when I don't have to do anything I find that having that quiet time then actually allows me to fill up with what nurtures nourishes and inspires me so having time to just go to the beach to have time to go for a walk to go hang out with my puppies and cats or whoever I'm looking after take time to have a nap that then when I get back from that inspiration has flown and boom I'm ready to share and that whatever I create from that space is truly fulfilling because it's coming from that essence state but the mind will obviously say that oh I don't have time for that right now there's so much to do yet so the key here is to allow yourself to be really 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 clear on the essence qualities that you wish to embody and then look to see what are the ways that are available for you to enhance that feeling that experience and when you allow yourself to bring that into to make that a priority to bring that into your life more and more and then you go into creating from that state you're going to have very different experiences right and so you'll notice that if you are saying oh my god i must be doing something wrong i mean you know they want to make things more complicated and you know, then you look, so I'm, you know, and what we tend to do then is that if something's not working, we go, I must have done something wrong, I must try harder, and now you go do more of what wasn't working in the first place. But because you've had some results that were to your liking, this is where the confusion can trip you up. So you think, oh, well, I've had some, some success in this area, um, I must just do more. All right, so you want to unplug, unplug. And Sarah's saying, you're so right, this has been me for so long. Wanting to avoid making mistakes has actually meant that I make more or has brought consciousness into my reality that I don't really want. Circumstances into my reality I really don't want. Yes, so true, right? And so when you're looking to create and you want it for money, money, money is just such a fabulous, if you want to know where you are out of sync with the light that you are, trusting the light that you are is capable of manifesting what truly lights you up then just put your attention on money and notice what comes up you know and when money is flowing freely and abundantly how do you feel in the moment that if you have any of these stories running oh my god it's going too easy I must have a challenge here then one of the things that may help here is to ask yourself you know if there was a root cause to this this money stress if there was a root cause to doubting myself, if there was a root cause to the fear of making mistakes, the fear of making wrong choices, and you know, if that root cause were removed, if we were to, un there will be have been some experience that created 
negative emotional uh, charge. And as long as that hasn't been resolved, then it will keep on playing out so that that can be resolved. You know, so if there was a root cause to whatever this is that is causing you stress, uh, when would this be? Would it have been before, during or after your birth? If you ask that question and just whatever answer pops into your mind, and if it's before, it may have been previous life. It may be from other incarnations. It may be from your ancestors. If it was during birth, then notice you know, what was happening. Ask yourself, what was it that was happening? If it was after birth, then ask you know, which time phase. First seven years, seven to 14, 14 to 21 or beyond. And notice what comes up. And then if you can just feel into, if there's something that you have set up for yourself to learn from this experience, let it be shown to you what that is. What is the lesson? What is the gift? What is the blessing from this experience that you have been wanting to give yourself and that you haven't been willing to receive? And because you haven't been willing to receive, the life keeps on presenting situations for you to keep on offering you this gift. And when you have received this gift, then you don't have to learn it again. It's like going through school when you take exams, you know, when you pass the exam, then you don't have to take that exam anymore, right? So it's the same with this. So if there was a root cause that is causing the stress that it has you doubt yourself, that has you, um, you know, worry, that has you uh, stress out, um, whatever it may be, would this have happened before, during or after your birth? And as I was feeling into this question, I was actually feeling into it yesterday because I had uncovered it as I was going through my things, what matters to me, that one of the things that got brought to awareness, which really surprised me, by the way, you know, I've done a lot of stuff on this, on this area, uh, but still this had not come into my awareness until now, uh, was that part of me had a story running that I needed frustration before something amazing happened. So if I look back through my life, the times where I've had the biggest, most amazing things happen in my life, right before that I got into action or to, to create a shift there, I was feeling mega frustrated. So part of the story running in my system was if, you know, in order to have amazing things happen, you must have mega frustration. So guess what my unconscious was doing? It was lining up things, circumstances to be really frustrated by in whatever area. And boom, that would, you know, until I got to the point from, ah, can't stand this anymore, I was ready to burst, and boom, something amazing happened. And so yesterday, as I was feeling into where is this coming from? You know, what have I not been able to see or willing to see in regards to this yet? And I was really blown away by the answer that emerged because I got that it happened during birth. And then I realized that my mom had told me that she'd been in labor with me for 24 hours and it was like, my God, so exhausting. I could actually, as I was feeling into the experience, feel her frustration and doing everything. You know, I was child number five. She's had plenty of experiences, you know, giving birth. But with me, it was taking 24 hours and by the, just before giving birth, feeling this frustration of just, oh my God, you know, just get this over and done with. And then I came into the world and she experienced this immense joy of seeing me and having me. And so that was the pattern I had taken on from my mother, that boom, that moment of sheer frustration and then the sheer relief and the joy and the beautiful thing that emerged, which in that case was me. And then as I saw this, I was like, wow, no wonder, you know, there was part loyalty to my mom to keep this going. And so I had to do a little bit of Ho'oponopono and offering back to source whatever in me had been holding on to this and keep playing this out so that this could be set free. And it's just amazing. You know, it just feels so much more flow. I went to yoga hot flow yesterday and oh my God, I was flowing through that class and just feels awesome. And yeah, so you know, this may be something that when you feel into where was, what was this root cause, for me it was that. And so now I was thinking, wow, over the years, I have definitely noticed it becoming less and less and less frequently, you know, requiring this mega frustration, but there was still some going on. And, you know, this just goes to show that it doesn't matter where we are in our journey, there is always something that will be ready to be released that wasn't ready earlier. And to be gentle with yourself in that process, because this is one of the things too, you know, how often have you said to yourself, I should already know this. 
And this art of essence manifesting is something new for us on this planet to live by. It's not being the operating system that the majority of the planet is functioning by. And so it takes practice as with anything else. And having community to support you with that is incredibly powerful, right? And Sarah's saying, yay, me too. I need things to be hard in order to deserve reward success. So Sarah, feel into that. If there was a root cause to that belief that you have to have things be hard in order to deserve rewards or success, um, would that have been set into motion before, during, or after your birth? And if you're watching this later, then whatever the area in your life is where you know, you've noticed that there is a belief that is coming up. And remember, belief is just a thought that you've kept thinking over and over. A lot of beliefs we have bought into because they've been imprinted into us in the first few years of being on this planet where we didn't have the capacity to filter, you know, does this actually apply to me? Does this actually support me? Does this empower me? Yes or no? You just took it on. And because it's been in there, you know, having quest and if you haven't questioned them, then you think it's yours, which is why we say, you know, if you've been doing a lot of clearing and a lot of shifting and a lot of work on the energetic level and things, patterns, you know, things are showing up again and again, then it'd be really helpful to ask, A, who does this belong to? return to sender, then go through this process of getting clear on what really matters to you. Because what matters to you, those are your values. What matters to you is what manifests. Yeah, what matters comes matter. Matter, form, manifesting in this world. What matters to you, what is truly important to you, is where you focus your energy and your time. And this happens consciously and unconsciously. And you may or may not know, you know, consciously it's been said that we have probably about 2% of capacity is conscious awareness and over 90% 90, 90 is unconscious. So, whoa, you know, good thing that we aren't conscious of everything that the unconscious is taking care of because imagine if you had to be consciously aware of your body digesting your food. Good Lord, you wouldn't get around to anything else. It'd be really overwhelming. So a lot of these patterns running unconscious are really helpful. Programs running, right? We've got body support systems that when all of that is flowing, it's amazing, a miracle. Yet we also have programs running unconsciously that keep these old distortions in place, right? So when you get clear on what truly matters to you, what is truly important to you, that is where your time and energy is focused. And when this is happening unconsciously, this process is one of the ways that you can bring this into conscious awareness and then start making different choices. All right, so then and Sarah's saying, yay for you, Tina. Yeah, you know, having the awareness of that experience with my mom was really, it surprised me. I was like, that I hadn't seen that before, you know? Um, and at the same time, looking back, I go, well, no wonder that clarifies a thing or two. So then one of the other things I would say, you know, when doing the clearings and saying, you know, knowing that when you let all this stuff go, that you keep the wisdom that you gained. And it's like there are positive learnings in every situation, no matter what happened. And when you keep those learnings, when you keep the wisdom from those experiences, they become part of your resourcefulness. You know, where you're able to tap into, wow, I wonder, I wonder what are the ways, some of the ways available for me to achieve my juicy money goals? What, what are some of the opportunities available for me that really resonate with what lights me up, that resonate with my desired essence states that I wish to consciously experience more of? And when you start asking yourself those questions, then your mind is on the lookout for things that answer that. So when you are finding yourself in a bit of a groove, when you catch yourself being aware of focusing on what you don't want, then you go, okay, what do I want instead? Yeah, you acknowledge it. Ask if there is something that is wanting your awareness from you, is something wanting to be acknowledged? Is there a gift, a blessing, a learning in this that you've been trying to give to yourself and get to see so that this pattern can be put to, put to rest, be completed? If so, let it be shown. And just allowing yourself to be open to receiving new awareness by being tuned into your essence state. And Sarah's saying, hmm, early on, maybe even while in the womb, I'll reflect more on this. Yeah, and the beauty here, the thing with this is too, so Sarah, you, you are such a great example for 
um, everyone who is in our group, and for many, you know, most of the people that I have worked with over the years, but we've been brought up in this society. Part of this program is um, what it will set into motion is analysis paralysis. Yeah, so what we'll do when you are afraid of making a mistake or when you're afraid of making a wrong choice, it will have you go into wanting to think and analyze everything in an attempt to not mess things up. When that is happening, you're using your conscious awareness, which is only a few percent of your capacity, to try and run the whole show. Whereas if you let that analysis paralysis go, and instead of thinking about it, and saying, okay, you know what, if it happened early, even while in the womb, if it happened while in the womb, to trust that, without having to make sense of it, because unconsciously you already know all of this. So if it happened in the womb, what is the learning that you have been wanting to receive from this experience that you haven't received yet and so therefore wherever you are in your life right now this keeps on playing out keeps on playing out when things are happening in the womb it can be helpful to know what was going on for your mom during that time what was it like for her to be pregnant what was going on with your dad for many 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 the experience uh, that they've picked up on was that the feeling the this is part of that tug, tug of war of the push pull that on the one hand parents being delighted you know the mum being really happy to be pregnant or maybe the dad's really happy to be pregnant uh, that the wife's pregnant obviously um, or it can also be that there's actually even though feeling really really happy all this fear coming up fear of oh my god how are we going to feed another mouth how are we going to get by? Oh my God, all this fear and worry. And when that is what is being fed to you, yeah, whatever your mother, your father, your family, in the environment that they were in, what they were experiencing, what that was feeding you energetically, you've taken that on as being imprinted within you and that's what you've come into the world with. And you look to see, okay, what could it be that you have taken on, what, would you be willing to return that to the sender? Return it to sender, and this may be really helpful to do the ancestral clearing of the money stories again, and to just let all this stuff just be transformed, dissolved, and the energy invested in holding on to all of that and carrying it forward to be source optimized with your essence so that you may be free from this. And without all of this, yeah, if that root cause were dissolved, and then all the subsequent experiences in your life that were similar to that original event that set all this in motion, if all the charge was stripped from that, so it's like truly pulling the energetic charge from that, letting that be source optimized with your essence, and then having all this fertilizer be available to infuse into creating what lights you up, then what becomes possible and available for you? Now, one of the things that we've touched on numerous times throughout the Money Mindset Makeover and maybe in private sessions as well, is you will come across that, that loyalty program, right? And so in the, old, in the old martyr game, it was loyalty to that that has created the experience of support in your life has often been of what wasn't working. And so offering up the definitions, the distortions of what supports your ego and not your essence and letting that be shifted. One of the things the way that plays out is loyalty to parents and loyalty to your ancestors and thereby not being loyal to the light that you are, loyal to you, prioritizing you, your light. So offering up any of the ways that you may even feel into that, you know, what would happen if you were to say done with that i'm no longer going to play out this loyalty and thereby wanting to please whoever you pledge loyalty to your parents to carry these patterns forward it's like what you've received as nourishment in the womb or before or after that that has been seen as being received you know, having received that from your parents in your environment who you've been loyal to and when you are uh, saying no things i don't want that anymore as if you're ungrateful, which then goes into that whole manipulation of you know, gratitude, distortion of gratitude, that it's not okay to feel gratitude, be appreciative of what you have and want more. Instead, hearing that story of you should be grateful for what you have. Yes, I am. And I 
desire more of what lights me up, right? So this stuff runs deep. It can spin your mind and go into, you know, well, down the rabbit hole we go. Don't let your mind go there and say, I need to understand everything. Your unconscious mind has all the answers. And one of the ways of bringing this to light to see if you're having an experience where things are just not unfolding the way you would like, then you know, go through the essence manifesting process, get clear on why you want it, whatever it is you want to manifest. What's it going to bring you and how do you feel with that? And then if you find that doing, you know, getting clear on what matters to you, creating this list of values is challenging for you, then go through looking at your life, the results you've been getting in the different areas. Pick one to start with and say, okay, with the results I'm getting here, what must I be valuing here? Yeah, and if you're having, um, experiencing lack, then you must be valuing lack, struggle, yeah? And, and then look to see, you know, why is that important to you? It will partially be because of having pledged allegiance to those who have gone before you and being hooked into the martyr game. It's part of being, you know, the wanting to belong and that goes back to being in that crab pot. And when you are choosing to step out of that crab pot, as in, you know, the misery pit, uh, the lack where everyone's broadcasting lack or everyone is worrying. If everyone in your life or majority of people in your life tend to worry a lot or they tend to gossip a lot and they tend to talk about all the stuff that's not working and it's been really, really negative and you are wanting to experience something that is way more empowering, way more um, exciting and aligned with what truly uh, delights you, then you are going to have to step out of the crab pot and that will bring up the fear of not belonging, the fear of being alone, abandoned, blah, 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 right? So I'll let all that stuff go and then look to see if there's any resistance within you anywhere which will show up if you keep on having the same thing show up even though you've said you let it go then ask what would that part or those parts of you require? What do they need so that they can let this go? Yeah, I was feeling into this myself this morning actually and feeling, wow, what, and it started last night after I'd had uh, this experience in regards to the frustration and, and the story I shared about uh, being in the womb and then having the flow yoga and then after she says, well, what I really needed, and that's what I've been really allowing myself to receive over the last few weeks, been in this phase of just not feeling very inspired to create anything, which there's another part going on with that too. Interesting, the times that are changing, the shifting energies, they're the old ways of doing things isn't working anymore. And we've been in this phase where everything's resetting. And so many, from what I have heard and read, have been experiencing this lack of being inspired or lack of um, wanting to create. And I've just felt a shift a few days ago, you know, when I talked about the juicy abundance amplifier, it's like, oh, that's exciting. I had no idea that was gonna come through, but that feels really juicy, right? So anyway, uh, bringing back to noticing what the feeling, what I noticed, what I was really needing was being comforted, being appreciated. I needed to feel really, really, really cherished. And you know, amazingly, uh, yesterday when I was finishing up the, the house sit where I've been staying, I've had this most delightfully sweet, super, Oh, such a joy bundle to be with little fur baby who just loved snuggling up to me close, close, close. And as we were having naps and as we were just relaxing, I felt so cherished and so appreciated and just so comforted just being in his presence. And he was feeling that for me. And that when the, uh, the parents, the, you know, the, the owners came home, uh, they had brought a beautiful bag of gifts for me, an absolutely gorgeous batik sarong, which is in the colors I love, and a gorgeous bag and a box of delicious chocolates called Love, and they're dark chocolate with orange, which I love. And you know, it's like feeling so appreciated and feeling so cherished. It was like, wow, isn't it fun? When you allow yourself to get clear on what it is that you've been needing so that you can let that old stuff go, 
And for me to let that pattern go of the remnants of needing that frustration, I needed to feel comforted, I needed to feel appreciated, I needed to feel cherished. And then coming into the home where I am now, same thing, you know, it's just feeling really nourished because the environment is so beautiful. And yeah, so whatever way that that plays up, you want to let yourself be filled up with what you would need. It could be that you needed to be filled up with love, that you needed to be filled up with uh, tenderness, with kindness. Maybe you need to be filled up with peace, serenity. Whatever the quality is, let yourself just breathe that in. Let those parts receive that and then say, okay, now that we have this, what you, know, what you were missing, what you were needing, now can you let this go? Taking all the positive learnings from the experiences, the wisdom gained, and letting everything else go. And now letting all the energy that was invested in all of that, that was causing the challenge or the issue in your life, that that be transformed. Source optimized with your light. And now go forth and let joy be your guide to creating a life and business worth waking up for every day. Yeah, feeling a wonder what is, what's available for me to experience and receive today that enhances whatever the quality is you wish to experience more of. And then say, what is the simplest, most obvious first or next step that I can take right now or today to bring me closer to the juicy goals I've set for myself? What's the most outrageous thing that I can do today or right now that will bring me closer to my goals? And then go do it. And if excuses come up, then you go through the no excuses exercise. All right, there is so much. And knowing that well, you've completed your money mindset makeover and some of you even for the second time, amazing. And have you noticed the shifts within yourself? You know, a lot of the stuff you already know it consciously. This journey is about really allowing it to sink in until it becomes a knowing. You are living it and you're no longer questioning it. And that's the journey of creating that unshakable confidence within the light that you are, that you are able and capable of manifesting what lights you up, that you're capable of manifesting what the, the support and the resources that you require in your life. And that journey is exactly that, a journey. It's not going to happen overnight. You didn't get to where you are today. You know, the beliefs that you have, the limitations you have in place didn't get there overnight. Many of them have been dragged around for eons. And if not from this life, previous times, you know, there's a lot of stuff. So giving yourself permission to be gentle with yourself and saying to the parts of you that felt, you know, they had to hold on to this old way of doing things, yay, awesome, you know, maybe do a completion ceremony and let those parts just be acknowledged for having played by the rules and the limitations that were set in place that you played by and informing them that the upgrade available now and that you require them to step into is, and then you let them know what you're choosing and that that is what you step into. And in order to really let that land within you, as you may have heard me share before, you know, Yogi Bhajan, who brought Kundalini Yoga to the West, said it takes 40 days to change a habit, 90 days to confirm that habit, 120 days to be that habit. So that's four months of every day practicing that new habit before it's become part of you. You're no longer thinking about it. You don't have to think about, like when you're driving, learning to drive a car, in the beginning you have to think of so many things consciously, right? By the time that you've been driving for a while, have you ever noticed that you're going to a place where you've been many times before and that, wow, you were completely elsewhere with your thoughts, you know, and then boom, you get jolted back into focusing on the road. Like, oh my God, that would not have been possible when you were first learning. All right, so a lot of the stuff in the beginning, you don't know what you're doing. Then you start to learn, you have to think about it. And then before you know it, you don't have to think about it anymore. You're just doing it. So this applies to this too. So having this, you know, having the tools available for you, you can go back through the replays from the Money Mindset Makeover and practice the tools. Go through the goals that you've set for yourself. And if something hasn't manifested yet, then we take it through this values process, find out what's been going on here and share in our group. And 
if you haven't heard me share yet about the Juicy Abundance Amplifier, then I'll record a little video about that. Um, I just had a bit more information come through as into practical stuff. Because like the way that it usually works for me is I'll get inspiration and the details start being dripped through and then things are being created as they are coming through, as is what's happened with the Money Mindset Makeover. It happened with the Abundance Accelerator. And in the beginning of this year, I didn't have any idea that was going to happen. Yet here we are. So I hope this is helpful for you. If you have questions, let me know. And Sarah saying, wow, yes, my parents' stress, especially regarding money leading up to my birth, would definitely have imprinted on me. Yeah, and so, it in the, you know, so let that be offered up and saying, you know, wow, without that, what's available for you? And, you know, for, for many of us, we are the ones in the family that are the pattern breakers. And when we break the pattern within us, we break it within the pattern and the healing the transformation that we experience can then ripple back through all the generations in all directions and the blessings are available for everyone to receive if they wish to experience them because it's all happening right now. That's how powerful you are. And so but being able to bust out of that, you know, in the family unit, um, having to conform to the rules of the family to fit in, you are busting free from, from from conforming, you are a rebel. You are, a, um, a, you know, a way, what do they call it, a way shower. You're blazing your own trail. And that is being true to the light that you are. And it may be very different from anyone in your family, the path that anyone in your family has treaded before. And that can bring up a whole lot of stuff. Yet I know that you know that you came here to be at this time to fully express your brilliance in the world. And it would be my absolute joy to continue this journey with you over the next 12 months, actually a little more because it's officially starting in January, but um, we'll have a few extra months. Anyway, I'll record a separate video on the Juicy Abundance Amplifier. And if you wanna know more about it, or just wanna have a chat because you're already feeling the excitement of it, then just message me and we'll have a little chat about it. All right, have an awesome day. Let yourself feel into what truly matters to you, not what you think should matter or what you would like to matter. We can dive into that more when we go into the um, Juicy Abundance Amplifier with getting clear on what matters, what you'd like to matter if some things are out of whack so that we can bring these into alignment because anything can be shifted. And it also plays out with your sacred money archetypes. You know, you look at the gifts, you look at the strengths, and you look to see, okay, which one could I tap into more to support me here? So, have an awesome day. Many, 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 many joyful blessings and have an amazing weekend. And wow, here we are in November. Ugh. Ah, amazing. Yeah, what a year this has been. And gosh, we're not even done yet. So have an amazing time wherever you are. And thanks, Sarah, for tuning in. So great to see you here. All joining from Bali. Let yourself receive even more amazingness. Let yourself receive what nurtures, nourishes, cherishes, supports, and delights your essence. And if you notice there is any part that feels like you've been settling and you've been tolerating less than what lights you up, then ask, you know, if there was a root cause to this, when would this have been set into motion? Before, during, or after birth? Let yourself receive the blessings, the gifts, the lessons from the positive learnings from those experiences. Retrieve it, retrieve it, retrieve it. Let everything else go. Let it go into the divine energy laundry. Let that energy be transformed. Let yourself call on your family of light, your angels, your support team. Let yourself be filled with what it is that you've been missing, that you've been longing for, so you can receive that quality, the love, the nurturing, the nourishment, the support, whatever. And from that full, filled place, then ask yourself, I wonder, what's the first or next step I can take now that's going to bring me closer to my goal? And then go do it. Have an awesome week, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Mmm. -hmm.